and extrapolate that to a nine-year-old boy or a 10-year-old boy who accidentally hits his knee here and a 10-year-old girl, who is more likely to hit the table? The 10-year-old boy or the 10-year-old girl? Boy. 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 Would a girl do it? Sure. These are not, you know, absolutely. Go for it. Hit the table. But you're going to tend to find more boys are going to do it. Interesting, some interesting reasons. And all of these things, remember, you could just say, I think it's because males were socialized to hit the table. It works. But let me give you another possibility, too. When um, males and females get upset, so when we're under stress, and if, if you haven't checked this out, Tracy, there's a number of people who have done this research, but Tracy Shores at Rutgers is someone that I know well because we're friends. She's done a lot of this research on male-female stress difference. So when males get under stress and females get under stress, what hormone shoots up for males, do you think? Testosterone. testosterone. Yeah, I heard someone say it. Okay, so males get under stress, their testosterone grows up, goes up. Uh, testosterone is an aggression chemical in adolescence, and later it'll become a sex chemical, but it's an aggression chemical in general. For females, oxytocin goes up. And I'm always curious, how many people have heard of oxytocin? Okay. So, uh, and some of you have not. It's fascinating, and if you are raising girls, I would beg you to get the wonder of girls. That has a lot on this, because it has a lot to do with, with girls. Now, we each have each other's hormones, of course, so, so everyone is each other. However, this is kind of an interesting irony about human life and human nature, that when I, as a male, get under stress, the cortisol level rises, right? That's my stress hormone. That's gonna trigger adrenaline. All sorts of things will be triggered. But follow this path, adrenaline gets triggered, and then testosterone gets triggered. So I move toward a fight or flight response because testosterone gets triggered. She's under stress. Gail, my wife, is under stress, or any of you here, female here, you get under stress. Um, your oxytocin shoots up. Your cortisol gets hit, then your adrenaline, then your oxytocin shoots up. Oxytocin is a bonding chemical. So you have an aggression, an aggression chemical in your boys going up and in men, and you have a bonding chemical in your girls going up, in women. That's a, actually a pretty profound difference. And um, I think it's one of the reasons you, you see this, that when females get under stress, they tend to move through it. They, they tend to try to find what's going on quite often more quickly if it's simple like this, and then they reach out, right? They tend to reach to someone. They reach into their bonding system. When they're really young, they cry. Later, they'll talk. Um, uh, can they go into a flight mode? Sure. Can they get depressed and pull away and just stay in bed all day? Sure. But I'm not talking about a clinical condition. I'm not talking about depression. I'm talking about everyday interactions that create stress. Females will tend to try to bond more to solve the stress. Males will tend to go into fight or flight mode. Now, males, by the way, are bonding, but we tend to bond through systems. Um, you know, we create groups and we bond in those groups. We don't tend to bond verbally motive as much. And we don't tend to reach into our bonding systems as quickly. So, so I would say that's another thing that's going on here with girls. And so there's a, an incredible functionality to that. And um, so it's really not about giving up. It's pretty functional to, to do it that way. Now, let's say we're working with girls, a couple wonderful clues for us. If we're working with girls and we're, we're saying to ourselves, well, you know, what, what would we learn, for instance, from a guy who's pulling on a string? There's actually, we could teach something to girls. I've shown, I showed this to my girls as they were growing up, and I asked them, so what would we learn from this? Um, and the second one got it, because I had already said it to the first one three years before. There is an advantage to pulling on a string and not stopping. And the advantage is inventiveness and innovation. Because if you think about it, how do things get invented? They actually don't necessarily get invented by processing a lot and then saying, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, reach into the bonding system and I'd like it all to be set up the way I'd like it to be set up and I, I really care a lot about how it looks. And, right? You have to just keep doing it and fail and fail 50 times or 100 times. So you have to keep pulling on the string and it doesn't work, and then you have to keep pulling on the string, and it doesn't work, and then you pull on the string, and, it, and the 51st time that you pull on that string and fail, the 51st time you invent the new operating system. Right? So that's, a, that's something we actually can help our girls with. 
Um, because a lot of girls, part of oxytocin is I want to please, right? I want, I want the, the relational systems to be stable. Now, if I hate this person, I'll certainly do something to deceive the relational system when I'm somewhere else. But right now, I'd like it to be stable. And I'm going to spend a lot of time on making it stable. That might mean we don't take as much risk. Whereas guys who don't spend as much time making the relational system stable, they're not processing as much of it, they might feel freer to make more mistakes and they might invent more.